as you may have seen in previous videos, the PA81 is intended to, you, to be used to test the power amplifier portion of a uh, hi-fi system. The FM stereo generator that you see here, a stereo analyzer, is the companion to that. It's called the SG80. I, I am assuming SG stands for signal generator. And it generates AM and FM stereo signals. Currently I have a Sony tuner connected to it. This is a uh, digital tuner. The inputs are connected to the line in of the Zencore PA81 that you see there. And then in the center you see the selector switch is set to the audio line's position. In this case it's reading RMS volts. And uh, as you see over here, well there's no music right now, but when there is music there is between 0.1 and 0.2 volts being uh, put out on the line output of the... Uh, there we go, now we're getting some music. There we are. Okay, so uh, that is basically the setup I'm going to be using for monitoring the uh, tuner. And next what I'm going to be doing is showing how this can be set up to do a, an analysis of the stereo sections of this tuner. In other words, we're going to substitute the uh, SG-80 in place of the antenna that uh, you may or may not be able to see there. It's just a couple of wires, one that runs up over there and one that runs up over there. So uh, what I'm hoping to be able to do is demonstrate how you can use a generator like this to do a performance analysis on a, a hi-fi tuner. If I can, I'm going to also perhaps try to show how it can be used to do a sweep alignment, but I may skip that part. I'll leave that until later, partly because the modern tuners just don't need sweep alignments. They have uh, circuits that are pre-tuned, generally using uh, ceramic or other elements to, uh, to do the tuning and because of that the need for the sweep alignment feature of generators like this has pretty much disappeared. But the uh, you still need the ability to generate stereo FM signals so that you can test things like the degree of separation between channels and the amount the output per channel and things like that. So let me set up some of that and show you the next phase. One of the first things that I'm going to be looking at is whether or not the unit can switch from stereo to mono. There is a, a circuit in the tuner that detects whether the stereo pilot is being received and if so, this light comes on. Now over here on the SG-80, and I'll show you this in a minute, that is stereo, that's mono. So you see mono, stereo. Now that is just ordinary uh, stereo. So let's go over and look at the uh, SG-80 now. I have the SG-80 set to 91 megahertz. The modulation right now is at 92 percent. The uh, pilot there's a, there's a little uh, indicator here that if your pilot is off of 100%, it should be right about there, that it will, uh, it will light. Over here you'll see that I'm using stereo. What I was doing a minute ago was I was switching between the stereo position and the monaural position. Now let's go up. Uh, what I'm going to do next is, you'll notice over here on the far right, there is a, uh, a right only and a left only. So I'm going to go up to the meters, where you can see this a little more clearly, and we'll go over to the left only, and you notice that the right meter goes to zero, and the left meter is at its normal position. 
Now we're going to swap those. And you notice that the right meter goes to its normal line output and the left meter goes to zero. This is essential for determining the separation between the stereo signals. If you were still getting some indication on this one when it should only be on the right, or the reverse, that is some indication on this one when it should be only on the left, that would indicate that your stereo separation is not working correctly. Sometimes there's an adjustment for that, but often that's due to some change in the components. In other words, uh, you may have a resistor that has changed value or a capacitor that's gone bad or something of that sort in the circuit. But sometimes it's just because somebody has played with the, uh, the separation control in the tuner, in which case you simply go through the uh, separation adjustment. And since those sorts of things vary from one unit to the next, I'm not going to actually show how to do it in this unit. What I'm really trying to show is how to use the SG80 in conjunction with the PA81 to do these various tests. So that is right only. This is left minus right. This is left plus right. You may notice a slight difference in the tone. That's due to phasing. So now we'll go back to pure stereo. You can also, with this generator, add an SCA signal. Uh, that's the uh, subcarrier that uh, <laughs> often carries the elevator music that you hear in the background in many businesses and uh, things of that sort, and in some elevators too. The uh, this particular unit allows you to adjust the RF and IF output. In this case, what we have is we have the RF output. Let me go down and show you that. We have the RF output connected here and connected through a, uh, a ballon to the 300 ohm inputs of the tuner. Tell you what, let me turn the, these volumes down so that they're not uh, bothering us as much. So here is the coarse adjustment and here is the fine adjustment for the output signal. And it varies over a pretty wide range. I'll show you the specs here in a minute for the SG80. This switch selects what the output is. It can select between RF, IF, multiplex, and sweep. Now, uh, multiplex we'll talk about later. Sweep, I mentioned earlier, is using a generator that sweeps over a frequency range and then you connect uh, an output to your scope. Now, in this particular case, this would be the vertical. This would be the horizontal of the scope. And then this is, comes from the detector probe. Now the detector probe is supplied with the SG80, or you can build one yourself. All it is is a simple AM detector. It's not an FM discriminator. A lot of people confuse that. They, when you're doing a sweep on an FM system, you're really just testing it with an AM signal. That is, the, the sweep causes the uh, output of the IF to vary in amplitude. And then you're detecting that varying ampl amplitude with an AM detector, and that's what plugs in here. The RFIF tuning is here, and you'll notice that it has two different ways of adjustment. It can adjust in fine adjustments, like that, or in coarse adjustments, and the difference is whether it adjusts this digit or this digit. So there's 5, 9. If I want to make it 6, I push it in and go up. If I want to uh, raise this in tenths of a megahertz, I push it in again. It's just a toggle. And now you see it, it switches in 200 uh, kilohertz increments. 
This is the pilot modulation. This is the audio modulation. You can set this to 100%. And I mentioned earlier that if you move the pilot off of 100, you see the light that comes on here? That's to warn you that you do not have the standard pilot signal. So we're down here, we'll come up, and when we get to 100, the standard pilot signal, the light should go off. <laughs> there it is. Okay, and then over on the far right is the audio that you can use. In this case, it's 400 hertz. Let me turn the volume up again on both channels. And now we'll go through. This is 400 hertz, a kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, it may be a little hard to hear that. And then you can use square waves, 400 hertz, a kilohertz, and 5 kilohertz square waves. I'll turn the audio back off again. The uh, unit can also take external audio. So if you want to use this, for example, as an FM transmitter, you can apply the audio here, left and right. Uh, from, from this, from these inputs. The other thing is the audio that is being used here is also brought out on this jack and can be used as a drive signal. Now what all you really mean as a drive signal is if you're actually testing inside an amplifier or inside the audio part of the tuner, you can use this. In other words, this is not a modulated signal. This is just audio. That audio then, depending on where this is set, is uh, modulated. It can be either monaural or stereo. We're using stereo. And then comes out either at the RF or IF frequency. Now, as I said earlier, you can also set this to the IF as well. So that's 10.7 megahertz. Here is a block diagram of how an FM stereo transmitter works. The left and right audio come in on the, the far left here. This is the left channel, this is the right channel. There's one difference between the right channel and the left channel because the right channel is inverted to produce a minus R signal. The right channel is also brought up here and added to the left channel to produce the L plus R. Now the L plus R is the signal that allows a regular mono receiver to receive a stereo broadcast without losing any of the audio information. So basically it's just the sum of the left and right channels. The way that you get stereo is mixed in with that L plus R signal in the transmitter is a an L minus R signal. I noted that the R signal is inverted, the right channel, then that is added to the left channel. That is, the minus R is added to the L channel to produce an L minus R signal, which is brought up into a balanced modulator. There is a 19 kilohertz pilot tone, which is used, it's transmitted over the air so that the receiver can synchronize to the pilot. It's also doubled in frequency and brought into the balanced modulator with the L minus R signal. And then that output is also used to modulate the transmitter. So the transmitter is sending out essentially three signals. The L plus R, the L minus R, and the pilot. Now if you're using SCA, the, it also is sending out that information, but that's a separate issue. So now let's look at the spectrum and then we'll uh, try to close out this video. So here is the spectrum that is produced. You'll notice that there is a pilot at this point. This is 19 kilohertz. The L plus R signal occupies the frequencies from 30 hertz to about 15 kilohertz. In other words, a little below the pilot above the pilot from about 23 kilohertz up to about 38 kilohertz is where the L minus R signal is. 
And then the other sideband of the L minus R signal is from 38 kilohertz to 53 kilohertz. So the receiver uses this signal and this signal to reproduce the L because of course if you take the L plus R and the L minus R you can along with the pilot tone to give you synchronization you can recover the left channel and the right channel and that is sent, sent through the amplifier and to the output of the tuner. So this is basically the way FM stereo works. I'm not going to go through, at least not in this video, uh, an example of using the, the precise instructions for a particular tuner. In this case I'm using this Sony, but it could be any tuner. And generally those are specific to the tuner, that is how to adjust for certain things, whether you need to adjust the IF or not, whether you need to adjust the discriminator or the uh, ratio detector, etc. What I've been trying to show is how the SG-80 generates this kind of a signal so that you can switch on like the L plus R and the L minus R. Now this baseband, in other words, the uh, this is the spectrum of the audio that is also what the SG-80 puts out when you put it in the multiplex mode. In other words, it puts out an audio signal that you can use for adjusting the stereo decoder in the tuner. It also, of course, puts this signal out on an RF frequency, either as an IF, like at 10.7 MHz, or an RF, like the 91 MHz that we were using. So I hope this has been useful in understanding how a generator like the SG-80 works, what it can be used for, and a little bit of the, the things you can use to uh, basically characterize an FM tuner's operation and determine whether or not it's doing what it's supposed to do, which of course is to accurately reproduce the left channel and the right channel from a spectrum like this sent over the air in the FM band. I don't plan to do additional material in this area unless there are some uh, re specific requests for that, but uh, I certainly will consider those in the future. But in the meantime, I'm going to close this video and wish everyone a nice day.